Thank you for joining the San Francisco Tech Council at our July webinar on loneliness, isolation, and technology. Here, in part three of our conversation, we welcome Maureen Feldman, Director of the Social Isolation Impact Project at the Motion Picture and Television Fund. Maureen will introduce us to an innovative pilot using Uniper, a video-based communication program to alleviate isolation and loneliness. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me here and, and great presentations already. Um, so uh, I do work for the Motion Picture Television Fund. I also teach for UC Davis and uh, Los Angeles Pierce College. Uh, both, surprisingly, I teach about social isolation and loneliness. Uh, at Pierce, it's a, curriculums for older adults to specifically learn how to use technology. And for UC Davis, it's in the professional development uh, department teaching county workers how to, um, I guess, recognize it and how to come up with solutions. So today I'm going to share with you a couple of things that we've been working on at the Motion Picture and Television Fund and one uh, pilot that we I did at uh, Los Angeles Pierce College with older adults. So if I can share my screen. At, Carla, can I share my screen? Okay. Um, so we at the Daily Call, um, Motion Picture Television Fund, we run a telephone-driven, volunteer-driven phone call program, which we found since COVID, we've grown over 40%. So this slide is a little outdated now, but we have over 150 volunteers making thousands of phone calls every month to our industry members. Many of them are not connected through Wi-Fi or have computer access. So the telephone is really one of the only ways that they get uh, to have their social connections. Um, we have also set up a coalition, and I am working with Carla Parasinoto and um, Sohan to set up the San Francisco Coalition to, again, improve uh, how we communicate with each other and share best practices. These are just some of the organizations that are part of our LA-based coalition, but we just had a meeting uh, two days ago before Carla's going on maternity leave about how we can work together more closely with San Francisco and with what you're doing up there. So we're not all working in a vacuum and we can really spread best practices. Um, one of the things we found out out of our um, successful program is a lot of agencies wanted to learn how to launch phone programs, uh, strategies, how do you manage your volunteers and how do you support them. So we created an agency toolkit, which is a step by step process of how to set up a program and a volunteer toolkit that allows um, almost anyone to help um, onboard and support volunteers. And since COVID, we've trained now over a couple hundred agencies throughout the nation on how to launch these programs, and we're supporting them. But the one thing we found out is, is loneliness can be treated with interventions, and it connects people with key resources. So whether you have um, access to technology or not, almost everybody has a phone. But what I was invited here to talk about today is really a pilot we did last year and we're launching it again uh, as we speak. And this was a, a television based. So it was like a Zoom platform uh, where we put small devices attached to the televisions of homebound clients. So everyone you see here is homebound for, for multiple reasons and all of them had, were lacking social connections. So I'm just gonna let you watch the short video and then I'll be able to answer the questions. George, I wanna thank you for your comments about the movie. It's oh. very nice. Well, wow, well, that was just one of my favorites of all time, you know, and when I, when I realized you were in it, it just made my whole day. Oh, how nice. Actually, I'm not her mom. I'm her sister. <laughs> <laughs> I did get a kiss from Paul Newman, too. I was about 20, and I was working in the makeup stock room at MGM, and he lost his wallet at the Pickwood Theater. He used to go and take a six-pack of beer and, and see the movies down there. So my sister's friend, knew that my sister that I worked in the movie business, so she gave me the wallet and I took it into work and I gave it to Paul Newman and he did give me a big kiss. He was very young. He was married to Joanne yet. Yeah, do you think, did your husband perform in Vegas? Maybe at the same time Linda was there? Do you remember what year that was? 1961. <laughs> no, I wasn't there yet. 
No, I was still there in high school in 51. That was the very first movie that HBO ever showed. That's the only movie that Richard Jekyll ever got nominated for. But um, at, when you first go on, you just kind of click to the right, and then you can click on whatever you're on, and it'll show you. Um, and there's, as I say, there's meditation, and there's yoga, and it's really, it's wonderful because you don't have to run to the gym. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for, for being here and sharing part of your life with us. Um, uh, you make me feel really good because years ago, I knew the dancers always turned out to be the best. Aww. But I couldn't ever get one to marry me. But <laughs> so um, what we uh, did was this pilot was uh, 12 weeks. All the participants were homebound. We held two facilitated group uh, meetings per week, and we had an 89% participation rate. We did the, um, we conducted the UCLA loneliness scores, both pre and post, and all their scores went down. Um, we had uh, recipients saying things like they got excited an hour to an hour and a half before they knew where they were going to get together, and said that it lasted sometimes an hour to an hour and a half afterwards because they were just so happy to be connected. Um, they also discovered that technology wasn't so uh, scary because the number of support calls went down. So you can see the average was about 53 minutes. We had pretty good participation. Uh, this is their peer only meetings, which they decided they liked this so much, they asked if they could get together on their own. So on Saturdays, 46% of them participated by meeting up just for, again, a social conversation with each other. Um, and the best part, this is how the first couple weeks tech support was on fire. And we had a lot of questions. How do you do this? What's going on? But each week it went down, which shows that adaptability is really there. Um, they really can learn when the desire is there and the outcome for them is beneficial enough. Uh, we also offered on-demand content. And this just shows that when we helped support them on how to get onto it, it went way up. So they really do need a little bit of hands-on uh, support there. And this is what it looks like. The remote is very simple. It's a small uh, little unit that's attached to the back of their television. It's a power cord, an HDMI cord. But this is a simple part. If they want to watch regular TV, they press here. If they want to uh, participate in a Unifor program, they press here. And then there's volume control. The rest is very simple. This also serves as their microphone. So putting it in their robe pocket did not work, which some of them did on a regular basis. But it was pretty simple. Um, we found that it was so successful that we are launching, uh, we're in the middle of it right now. We're working with people who have Alzheimer's and dementia related diseases who are living at home alone. And we have caregiver groups as well. So we're installing these in the units or cottages or apartments of individuals, and we're keeping them as socially connected as possible through this process. And our goal is to help provide some independence for as long as possible until the next stages. And then for their caregivers who cannot get out and who cannot find ways to socialize, this will be an opportunity for them as well. And this was all set up before COVID, but now that COVID has kicked in in full gear, we have a lot more people wanting to participate simply because the, the access to other socialization is not there. So um, for anybody who thinks that older adults do not want to uh, learn about new technologies, this is the class that I was teaching this last spring. Um, there were 65 students in it of all ages, ethnicities, income levels. Uh, starting from the early 50s and the oldest uh, was an 89 year old, all wanting to learn how to use their phones, to use apps, to, to text their grandchildren. Um, the one nice thing about this is, uh, you know, it gave them an opportunity to learn how to live more independently. They learned communications, how to shop online, health management, and banking. So, this is no longer a luxury. This, these technologies are going to assist people in staying in their homes longer, uh, more independently, especially again with COVID uh, kicking in.
Uh, this is just so I take pre and post surveys with the classes I teach as well. Uh, and again, this is based on over 200 students. And after completing the course, which very few um, come to every single class, you know, we had almost 45% uh, began texting. Um, they learned to use search engines for health apps and um, other information they needed. They started using apps on their phones. Uh, they started enjoying YouTube and the free education and entertainment that it offered. Many started using I, uh, FaceTime and Skype specifically to stay connected. And I was shocked at this, but 70% joined Facebook specifically to um, lurk and see pictures of friends and family. Um, and this is what I'm most excited about is most after taking this class experienced a reduction in um, fear. They increased their confidence in using both social media and the other uh, you know, communication uh, platforms. They uh, increased their proficiency and um, increased connectivity with friends and family, which is really what we want to, uh, to provide them as far as um, trying to decrease social isolation and loneliness. And the other thing is they increase their ability to access free resources, things that have to do with health, education, entertainment. So specifically now with COVID, we found it incredibly important to provide as much um, guidance and support as possible. So I'm gonna stop that. Um, you know, we realize that there are a lot of barriers like no access to Wi-Fi or simply forgetting how to access, you know, the platform like Uniper. So we've learned we have to provide support. We're training volunteers to be those tech support, whether it's just simply to tell them to take the um, microphone out of their pocket or to, you know, turn up the volume. It's simple, but it, it really solves a lot of um their social connectivity issues. Um, and then again, for the caregivers, we're really finding that just having a window to the outside world is providing an opportunity for them to connect uh, when they cannot you know, leave the responsibilities of the individuals they're caring for. So we're looking forward to expanding this program, making it more widely available and, and you know, releasing the findings you know, when we're done with this. This is a much longer study, so I hope to have good information to share with you. But uh, older adults, they, um, they can and will adapt to new technologies, but the technologies have to be designed um, with them in mind. We can't keep trying to make them learn what we do or what you know, the latest tech devices. We really have to provide them support, guidance, and, you know, show them how it works and why it will be beneficial to them. And, and they, they really are interested. We just have to provide more learning opportunities. So that's pretty much that for us at this moment in time.